Baba Yaga, Podcast 3. The Resolute. Burned! Burned! She was burned alive, Agil! I knew her! What? I knew that woman. She came to see my mother when I was younger. She was sweet and kind. She bought herbs from us for tea and pain remedies. The last time I saw her was in the village, not that long ago. She looked so different. She whispered when she spoke. She looked so frightened. She barely spoke to me. She was tied to a stake and burned while she was alive. Why would anyone do this to her? V, is this the first time you have seen something that happened in the past? No. No, it is not. I've always thought they were dreams or things I imagined. This was no dream. No. No, it's also not the first time I've witnessed death by fire. Taking V by the shoulders. Who? Who did you see burn? Me. Egil releases her. Everyone in the village was yelling and screaming, Witch! Witch! They were going to burn me just like they burned her. I make the same remedy she did. Yeah, I picked the herbs that she bought. Everything I have ever learned is about herbs, sicknesses, and healing. And now... Now you know you have something Baba calls the gift of sight. (laughs) Great. I'm sure they burn people for that, too. V, I've never seen the past, but I've seen plenty of terrible things in the present, as bad as burning flesh and much worse. I have also seen amazing cures and extraordinary good. I think good has gifts and evil as devices. Both can be formidable. You have gifts, V. Claim them before someone else uses them as devices. What are you saying? How is someone else going to use my... There are ways. Well, I don't know of any. I'm sorry, Agil, but for a man of few words, you sure do say a lot once you get talking. Egil smiles. V looks at the pile of logs. I know you are trying to help me see things as you do. But all of this is so unnerving. I know. The doll jumps up and down in her pocket. I want to clear this away. V carries the burnt logs and bits of rope to the stream. Egil helps. Once the burned place is cleared away, V touches her forehead, lips, and heart with her right, then left hand. She watches as the stream carries bits of rope away. I think I know why you brought me to Baba Yaga. The villagers don't come to the hut as they used to now, because Baba Yaga is not a healer. Now she is a witch. The cures she makes that have healed them could now suddenly cause their death. Is that what they think? Uh. Most villagers don't think much, V. Famine, sickness, and death bind them together. Fear is the glue. And they would see me as a witch as well. That is why I brought you to Baba. There is no safer place for you. They start walking towards the cave. As V passes, tree branches move, leaves rustle. Some leaves move up to the sky. V rubs her forehead. I thought the word witch was a cruel way to curse someone. Worse than true or hag. I never thought of it as a chosen profession. The word witch has become more powerful than a person. Once labeled a witch, you are no longer seen as human. Well, then I'm not a witch. I'm not interested in evil. I'm interested in healing. I've never been interested in the dark arts. Never. But your gifts can be used for evil. No, they can't. Not by me. No, by others. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Can we talk about something else? Please. All right. All right, of course. 
How can the hut change so much? Change? I'm not sure it changes as much as shows another side of itself. You speak of the hut as though it were alive. Ah, it is in a way. You have never seen the hut when Baba Yaga is inside. When the villagers come to her for help, she is kind and patient. The hut is calm, alert, always alert, but quite calm and peaceful. And then there are days like today. As the wind starts to rise, the tree branches still. A day where the skull's fire collapses into itself and rose-colored quartz replaces the flame. The light you saw glows from sunrise to sunset. It signals a day when the villagers can come and offer thanks. She cannot receive these gifts, not by their hands, or even mine, for that matter. They bring herbs from far away. They weave fabrics. It used to be a, a days-long procession. But now... Now people have become fearful when it is done in secret. Why can't Baba Yaga receive their gifts? I don't know. But you said that she could not receive a gift from you? Yes. Why not? It is best that you learn from Baba. She has much to teach you, and she will answer your questions when the time is right. Are you staying with her, or are you leaving? V looks up at the cave and then back at Egil. The doll in V's pocket jumps up and down. V slips her hand in her pocket. So, perhaps if there is more to the hut... There is more to Baba Yaga as well. Is that it? In part. Egil offers her the mouse from Demetrius. Give this to Baba. She will know what to do. As for the powder... Egil reaches into a small talisman bag he wears around his neck. He takes out one small flower. If you find more of this flower, it can be mixed together into a tea. Give it to her after supper. You will find what you seek. Egil closes the flower in her hand and looks into her eyes for a moment. He gallops off into the night. V climbs the hillside. She looks back at the valley as wisps of moonlight course through the saxol and silver birch trees. She looks at the little dead mouse in her hand, pats her pocket with the doll and jar, and turns to enter the cave. Inside the cave, night. Cave is quiet and clean. The torches burn with a warm glow. B is seated on a stool at the kitchen table reading a large, leather-bound book. The jar of gray powder and the flour from Egil are in the center of the table. Two mounds, one of black poppy seeds and one of fine black dirt are on the table. The cage, where she spent her first night, is upright and hanging from the ceiling. Both pairs of hands are locked inside the cage. One pair rattles the bars, feeling about for an opening. The other pair noisily attempts to pick the lock. The poppy seeds are sorted, and the stew is on the stove. Now to the tea. B takes the doll out of her pocket and places it by the jar and flour. She glances at the illustrations in the book one more time. Asphodel? No. Chamomile? No, that's not right. Wait a minute. What if... V picks up the flour. Finding two small jars with dried flowers, V pours both jars out and compares them to the flour. How can I tell if this is the same flour when there is no one to ask? A shimmer of light passes from the doll to one of the jars. How can I tell if this is the same flour when there's no one to ask? Again. A shimmer of light passes from the doll to one of the jars. Speaking to the doll. Is this... Is this the same flower? A light pulses around the same jar. She takes the jar and puts everything else away. The wind at the cave's entrance sounds like wolves howling, making bees' hands shake.
If I mix this flour with this powder and give it to Baba Yaga, will I find what I seek? Nothing happens. V looks back into the book. Will this powder and this flour make a tea for Baba Yaga? A faint shimmer of light passes from the doll to the powder and the flour. Show me how to make the tea. Without any help from V, two tiny dried flower buds and a teaspoonful of gray powder come to rest on the table side by side. V smiles at the doll. Wait, Igil said I will find what I seek if I make this for Baba. But what do I seek? I'm not even... V takes a bit of muslin cloth, ties the flower buds and powder inside, and steeps it in a pot of boiling water. She sniffs the tea, pours a small amount into a cup, and drinks. A gust of wind rushes into the cave. V tidies up, putting the book and jar away. She leaves the tea in the pot on the stove. Sounds at the entrance of the cave catch V's attention. She snaps her fingers. The hands in the cage stop all movement. Hush! I cannot hear! The hands rush to grab the cage door, palms facing the entrance of the cave. Hello? Baba? V grabs her coat and heads out of the cave. The entrance of the cave, same night. As soon as V clears the entrance, Previn, 61 winters, jumps on top of her. <gasps> His wrists pummel her face and body. At twice her size, V is no match for him. Previn pushes his wrists into her throat. V starts to lose consciousness. Egil rushes to V's aid. Previn kicks an almost lifeless V aside and turns to face Egil. A terrible fight ensues, but the light is fading quickly and night draws closer. Previn begins losing strength. His terrible, choked, and garbled sounds give way to grotesque gasping. You, you are bound to bring the night. You will not succeed. Nor will you survive the wrath of Baba Yaga. No, not this time. The two huntsmen face one another, and then an invisible force throws Previn on top of his steed. Night descends. Egil picks up V and heads into the cave. As soon as Egil, carrying V in his arms, crosses the threshold, the cave comes alive with menacing growls. Knives burst through the walls, pointing in his direction. Egil stops. I have V! Blood of her blood! Let me pass or she will die! The growls quiet, and the knives retreat. Egil places V on the bed and checks for breath. V! V, can you hear me? V is unresponsive. Egil stands and addresses the cave. Baba! Where is Baba Yaga? Summon her! She must come at once! The hands rattle the cage. Egil looks up, surprised, but keeps moving. He runs out of the cave. Inside the cloister, night. Baba Yaga is covered from head to toe in a nun's gray tunic. She walks at the end of a procession of villagers going to confession at the rear of the cloister. Light-colored tapestries of peaceful pastoral scenes cover the walls throughout the cloister. As Baba Yaga walks slowly toward the confessional, a procession of monks pass her, exiting into the streets. They carry incense and alms. They chant in unison. Baba Yaga waits a few seconds after the last villager leaves. She steps into the confessional. Father Vasily's face cannot be seen. You who seek forgiveness, tell me your sins. Bless me, Father, for I have witnessed sin. Tell me, daughter, what sin have you witnessed? Baba Yaga leans close to the screen that separates them. Swiftly, she points her finger at the screen. A black chain shoots from her finger and binds Father Vasily's mouth shut. He freezes all movement for a moment, then bolts out of the confessional. No. The chain ropes around his body. Baba Yaga meets him in front of the confessional. If I'm going to tell you my sins, we're going to need a bit more privacy than this. After all, you might have some sins as well. Father Vasily turns toward a door that is slightly hidden. No. Not there. Baba Yaga does not touch him, but 
but leans in a little closer. To your private chambers, Erebus, the cruel. Baba Yaga removes his hood and hers as well. They eye each other for a long moment. Erebus smiles slowly. He turns and heads down the hallway. Seeing no one, he walks behind the stone altar. Stepping on a narrow stone, the floor shifts, and a winding stairwell leading down below the cloister is revealed. So surprised you didn't bother to change the color of your hair. Getting careless? Go on. <clears throat> They walk down the stairwell to a well-lit chamber. The large black owl chained to a perch in the corner of the chamber turns its head to Baba Yaga. Using the energized air around her, Baba Yaga slams Erebus down into a large ornate chair. No need for this. I'm sure no sounds can be heard from here. She waves her hand, and the chain unfurls from his mouth. It covers his hands and feet, binding him to the chair. So at last we meet. Oh, I've been looking for you your whole life. And here you are. As long as you are bound by that chain, you are powerless. <laughs> A cheap magician's trick. No. A very powerful gift from my father to my mother. She didn't understand its real value. But my father did. You remember my father now, don't you, Erebus? He was just as cruel as you. More so, I imagine. Mother said the day father left, he was looking for you. Now, why would that be? Hmm. Because I was looking for him. A smug expression runs across Erebus' face, and for a split second, his eyes glance at an unbound manuscript. Your father's talents were extraordinary. Oh, his subtle twisting of alchemical forces was like nothing I had ever seen. I learned everything I could from him. I did whatever he asked, without question. Oh, necromantic skills the likes of which I, I have never seen. His grimoire was to be mine at his death. All his talents would come to me. So it was you who killed him, wasn't it? Yes! <sighs> but by then it was too late. He had already placed his talents elsewhere, hadn't he? He had gifted you with all those talents. You, not me, the rightful recipient. A whinging, mewling infant. Ah, oh, what were you, three or four winters? Oh, he said he saw real promise in you. Ha! Erebus spits at Baba Yaga's feet. He must have lost his mind. An empire at his feet, and he chooses a witch! What a waste. The chains tighten. <laughs> you like that word, don't you? Erebus spits again. Baba Yaga opens drawers and pushes open small trapdoors. You have no idea what could have been accomplished mixing your father's talents with mine. But it doesn't matter now. Now, it won't be long before there's nothing to stop me. Baba Yaga bends down to pick up an old necklace of the goddess. There is a tiny, empty space where a moonstone once was. Hmm. Eleni's granddaughter, no doubt. Erebus looks away. Baba Yaga sees a walking stick adorned with gemstones. The tiny moonstone is at the top. She uses the walking stick to tap the floor. Arkriti! Nothing happens. <laughs> oh, your father would be so disappointed. Oh, this is what happens when you waste your legacy on a female. Just as pathetic as the day you were born. You and that laughing stock of a witch who was your mother. 
Of all the depositories your father could have used, I will never understand why he chose that mother of yours. So, can you do anything besides use your papa's chain? Well, I'm not the one in that chain, am I? <laughs> For now. My, you have been busy, no doubt about that. And right in the middle of the village. Yeah. One village is the same as the next. And look where we are now. It is I who found you. And you've been looking for me for a very long time. Yes. Well, apparently your father did not teach me everything. I've come to find out he taught me very little. I just did all the heavy lifting. Clearly he found a way to keep you hidden that I could never break. Some kind of veil, some sort of... Oh, so close. So many times. As if my eyes were... Erebus looks up in surprise. <laughs> yes. I thought you'd notice that sooner or later. You see, after this chain was forged... I found ways to add other talents. Yes, let's use your words. I learned how to add some of my own talents. I found several sorcerers to be quite helpful, uh, almost eager, you might say. So yes, one of those added talents is that you cannot lie to me. You are bound to me, and you must speak the truth with your very forked tongue. What a mistake I made the day your sister and her daughter slipped through my fingers. Baba Yaga leans against the wall. <gasps> what did you say? <laughs> yes, of course. The day your sister's husband died, I was so very close. Your father's grimoire was meant for me, and I almost got what was rightfully mine. Oh, I'm sure you thought yourself very clever, hiding it with your half-sister's family. Ha! Well, unfortunately, I could only kill one. But they didn't get away unscathed, now did they? Oh, you really are a horrid little worm of a... Man. Erebus spits. <laughs> I wouldn't blame yourself. You must have been too busy with the boys from the village. Must be quite a blood contract you signed to amass all this power. What could you have given in exchange? You clearly never had a beating heart. <laughs> And how is Vasilisa? Long and healthy life? Oh, careful now. You wouldn't want to lose your temper. You're already so weak. You do know you're dying, don't you? Just like dear old Papa. It's quite obvious. I think it's quite impressive what you've done. Such a, a lot of time devoted to a few misbehaving males. But being a female, you're, you're just born with less strength and less intelligence. I'm not even sure you have anything to offer me now. Except your death, of course. Baba Yaga spits where Erebus has spat, <laughs> causing a wisp of gray smoke to dissolve his spit and leave the floor dry. She steadies herself. I assure you, just as you underestimated my father, Kochki the Deathless. You underestimate me. Hence the lineage, Deathless. Look around you. We are winning. Every year we burn, mutilate, drown, torture, rape, and strangle the life out of your sorry lot. By the time we are done, there shall be no more of you. Even if you can kill me, which I doubt. Thousands of priest Vasilis wait at the ready to replace me. 
You're a weak and ignorant lot that will be cast out and forgotten. Enough! Baba Yaga slams the walking stick into a section of the floor. A deep, dark pit opens. Baba Yaga steps back. A roar of horrible screams and cries escapes from below. Erebus recoils in on himself. In Mormantala. The chain quickly covers Erebus' entire body, up to his eyes. You are right, Erebus. I am dying. But my abilities will not pass to you. Or that horrible lineage of males you taught to use fire. The air in the room shimmers with a pressured energy. You see, there's a third talent within this chain. Yes, we work in threes. Because three is sacred. The earth, the plants, the animals. Sacred practices handed down woman to woman long before your kind ever showed up. Baba Yaga spits blood on his chair. Acting like acid, it begins to slowly dissolve the chair. These chains. <gasps> Suddenly, the owl turns its head to Baba Yaga and opens its beak. Baba! Yanked from where she stands, Baba Yaga, the manuscript Erebus glanced at, and the owl vanish. <laughs> <laughs>